Hey, Sri Lanka, this is Yasmin Yusuf, and right now I have the very cool Sean Amar Sekera theater guy, uh, big, the guy with a big voice. Hello, Jacob's how are you? Jacob's letter, Gosh. and... Parker dude. Circus, yeah, that was a new... That was, yeah, yeah, with, with, One. with our Booker Prize winning Shehan, yeah. So we're, we're cooking stuff up there. Um, hopefully we'll get something out to the public sometime soon, but yeah. Wow, you just went straight. I went straight into it. I'm like, I, 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 this is why I came here today. But Fiddler yeah. on their roof. Fiddler uh, on the Fiddler roof. But on yeah. their roof. But we can talk about anything. Yeah. We Firstly, yeah. hi. <laughs> hi. So How are you, man? <laughs> well, I, I am tired, but in a good way because okay. yeah, we've been uh, plying away at yeah so many things for the last like four and a half months, and we're finally at our finish line. We're doing Fiddler on the roof uh, just down the road of the Lionel Vent. We started on Friday was our Whoa. was our opening night. Congratulations! Thank you. Yeah, we had a really good opening, a great crowd, like a full house on the first two nights, and where yeah we got on the we run all the way from the fourth, which was Friday, till Sunday the thirteenth. Well, there is a little time left. There is time, so we run on all the weekdays uh, from tomorrow's Monday all the way to Friday, and we have matinees on the last weekend. So okay. you've got like nine more shows to catch, but really, uh, we'll talk about the show, but. You know, get your tickets, and it's available at the box office at the Lionel Bend. Please go get your tickets. It's from no, I'm, I am biased, but from the feedback that we've been getting, I think everyone is really touched and moved by this show. I think it's a really beautiful piece of work and very relevant for our culture and the times Ooh. we live in. Yeah, it is. So, okay, uh, I know. Tell me, ask questions, and then otherwise I'll just keep talking. So you better, you better direct. <laughs> is this me. your fiddler beard? This is my fit. So the last time you probably saw me was at w Comic Con. Rock, yeah, Rock No Rock. Oh yeah, before that. Yeah, so be Rock Nation back in like March, April. No, did I wasn't we there. We were there. We were Chunky's gig, and I had like this. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. So I, d I was doing some Led Zeppelin and stuff. So I needed the fashionable goatee. But for, since then, I've been great. So it's been a good six months. Okay. So this is six months of, uh, and you never know. I've never had it this big, but it's 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 impressive. Yeah. It's Very. Cool. I, I'm like I'm 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 hesitant to let go of it because. I've got Maybe you could braid it and make it into like a I thing. I possibly could. At the <laughs> hospital, I did ask my boss, like, you know, I'm go I've got a play going on. Is it cool? Yeah, it's fine. You know, it's fine. As so long as there's like a beard net. My, my, my mom hates it. She like doesn't like beards. So I'm like, yeah, okay. But what Mama, to do? only one beard. Yeah, I only get I to grow one beard but a year. This is, this is, this is, yeah, this is good. I'm, I might hang on to it for a bit long. I've got, I, I've got used to it. The fiddler beard. The fiddler beard. The Tevia beard. You, you need to have it. So that's the character you're playing? Tevia, yes. He's sort of the protagonist of the story. Um, yeah, but ask direct questions. Otherwise, I have a tendency to talk nonstop. So. <laughs> you know, it's a podcast. And sometimes on podcasts, we're just like very chilled out. We are. And uh, it's not like an interview where you're like, okay, let's get to the point. It's yeah. like, yeah, bro, let's like catch up. Because it's yeah. honestly been like a long minute since Comic-Con. And yeah, right I'm after Comic-Con, like you just went disap you just disappear from Facebook. I Yes, um, I just jump from one thing to the other because I'm really quite schizophrenic. So... My day job is a doctor, which is the best money I spent because it's the greatest punchline. What do you do? I'm a doctor, and there's like five seconds where they go, cricket, really? Cricket, 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 like cricket. a medical doctor? Yes, yes. I I save the occasional life and Watch prevent, on, but and prevent like, the occasional death. There's like, um, I don't know, a shortage of doctors, right? In the country? There is. I mean, there's been a brain drain, I think, across the board, and, and the health sector is definitely not a stranger to it. So things have got hard. I mean, we thought COVID was bad and it was stress filled and we would we we it was like it was like a Stephen King it was like the stand from the Stephen King novel, you know, just driving where there was nobody around and uh, you know, we were worried. We were like that we thought that was the worst it was going to be and oh boy, were we wrong. Things got worse. But we stuck together and we got through it and um well, we're hopefully on the other side of all that stuff. Let's hopefully the road rises up to meet us. Let's see. Yeah, hopefully there are new eager students learning to... Well, there are. I, I mean, just touching on where we are now, I think it's we should not put restrictions on education. I think education... Yeah. I think this is just not to go political, but I think there's a difference between free education and freedom of education. I think both are extremely valuable. And I don't think you should put caps on it for any sort of a narrow agendas. Um, we, mm. need, we need... Uh, we we've lost so much. I think we could the, the the money currency can depreciate. The dollar can go up and down depending on what those big fellows out there and the oil countries do. But human resource is something that we can only make here, 
And once we've yeah. lost it, we have lost it. We lost so much of talent in the 80s. And we've had another efflux right now. And we're never going to get that back. So, or we might need to coax them back by making things better. But the people on the ground have to do the hard work. So let's let's build a better, you know, lot of people. You know, I think it's up to the next gen to step up. And, you know, our gen, we didn't, mm. we didn't have much of a, too much of a say in it. But, um, yeah, it, it ha- solutions. Some... Yeah, people. I mean, solutions can be from outside, but the people have to be from here. So we need to do it. We need to, you know, pull ourselves up and don't limit people to achieve their potential. There's so much. I mean, talking about, let's say, going back to theater, there's so much talent, unearthed, untapped talent that is just waiting for the right opportunity, which is why I love what you do. Um, you spotlight so many people relentlessly. Every time I come see you at a gig, I. I feel like I have to come over and say thank you because I mean it's, it's not, teamwork. No, man. I know, but yeah, but you are a rare you are a rare creature on that score because I've seen all this fluff stuff that goes on TV where it's just about you know oh, let's make up make each put nice makeup on and have nice set lighting and all that and do it like puff piece and it's it's not that it's mucking in in the trenches at a metal gig at a play at a concert at a rave or down south you are there you cross you know i i i I reached out to you today because today i saw my facebook feeds threw up a message from 10 years back when you came to see us doing the phantom of the opera and when I was playing the Phantom that year, 2014, Whoa. 10 years. So it was 10 years and that you were raving about it and you were like, oh my God, it was so good. And I was like, oh gosh. And I said, my, I, I hadn't seen you, but I, I, I don't know whether our sh- fiddle on the roof, what we're doing now, uh, got on your radar. So I thought, wait, I must reach out to you because you never miss this stuff. So I did, I messaged and you. And I'm glad you did because yeah. dude, like Facebook, right? Yeah, no, And no, I'm it, not going to lie to you. Like it, sometimes. No, it, suddenly something I've posted is just so down the feed that I, I miss it. So yeah, sometimes you, there's just too much information and there's so many things happening. So I'm very glad I reached out and you were very kind enough to, to you know, so please come and have a, have a, yeah, yeah, sooner the better because we dude, we need to promote good stuff, man. Yeah, because um, yeah, we run all the way till like I said Sunday, and mm. the weekday tickets usually are the ones that um, you know we want to really push because uh, there's a lot of schools, there's a lot yeah. of kids who need to be inspired, and theater is something that's. I mean, forever. a lot of the uh, the thing about okay, this show is it's it's an oldish type of show. It's it actually okay. It made its Broadway debut back in 1964. No way! On, on the twi- on the 22nd of September, so we just hit. 60 years of this show and you wonder why is it relevant 60 years on and well you gotta tell us man well the thing is okay it's based on some old stories by an author called Shana Malekum about this very it's this, it's about this um, community of people there in Tsarist Russia and there's this his, the central protagonist is Tevye who I play who is a milkman a dairyman and he has five daughters and it's the it's the period of s- civil unrest in Russia because the Tsarist hmm. regime is kind they want to you know the, they want to it's there's like a revolution about to happen and uh, this minority community who lives there is sort of feels the pressure of being becoming scapegoated for all the stuff that's mm-hmm. going on so that's the big sort of even i mean look we have the big picture but ultimately what matters to you or me is your interpersonal relationship with your family with your friends the world may be changing in a big way but ultimately what holds you and keeps you and s- keeps you safe and yeah. grounded and looked after is your family whether it's your chosen family or your birth family or the family you find it's family and that mm. this musical is about that it's about his five daughters and how they push against the traditions that have held them as a community and because they want to they want to chart their own destiny it's 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 like a feminist piece it's these girls who are expected to have a role where they will you know marry and have kids and look after them and you know just look up run the home and and some of them say well what if i don't want to do that what if i mm. want to break away from that and and each daughter uh, tests keeps testing the boundaries of this father. and I'm I I'm a I'm a you as you know I'm a father of four I have four daughters one less than Tevye um, and they all happen to be in the show I, I, it's not nepotism they, yeah they come they're, they're like they're doing little bits and pieces all over the place because uh, because they have fun it's and it's and it's it was a family show it really is a family show it's for all ages and um, but the, the the point is that you you do want to um, the connection between parents and children it's still what the boundary line is, whether mm. it's interfaith marriage or whether it's 
uh, orientation. If it was tw if it was twenty twenty four, it could be your gender, it could be your sexuality. Those lines of taboo just keep moving. Yeah, and it's up to us as parents: do we reach out and 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 or, or do we do we cut off ties? And it's it's about ultimately how love will the love conquers all, and it's hmm. not this frivolous sort of you know. Uh, uh, boy girl thing it's 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 connection and and ultimately it's it's a like i said it's a feminist piece i think you a male once you have a daughter you you become a feminist i think you really do because you realize you want you want fair you just want it's not about up or down it's about an equal equality equality equ you know not at least equality of opportunity if not equality of of, of outcome and this man, back in 1905, which is when this is set, wow. really, uh, he he really puts him. There's a moment where he he has this he has this debate with 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 his, with his God. How do I move ahead? And how do I I I, I have my I, I have to look after my daughter. But how do I hold on to what's important to me? And then he keeps seeing it from their point of view. Look at my daughter's eyes. How can I deny her? Wow. And he come and he and he keeps trying to to serve them and to do the best because he wants what's that's all we can do as parents is want the best and give the best but ultimately they have to plot their own destiny and it's about his struggles and there's bigger there's a bigger sort of narrative that's as always in the world is struggling you know the people have to struggle within that but there's this microcosm which is family which is what this show is about and on so many we've had quite a young audience on the opening night and there was um, because I think all we were young we had like so many teenage girls coming to audition for this because there's three main sisters and there's altogether five but we had we had like half the auditionees were you're like teenage girls and we're like my god what are we <laughs> going to do with them we only got three roles but we we have multiple cast them because we are the workshop players which have been um, since 1992 so we're like going into like like getting into 30 years or wow 30 years. yeah we've been doing that a long is time. impressive it's a long legacy and we have done straight plays and shakespeare and but but musical theater is what we're known for and that's not an easy genre because it's expensive it's there's so much a commitment that is required over a long period of time you yeah. just can't put it together in a month or a week it takes months to get people you know learning you know and this, and this song this is so heavy on choreography there's a lot of dancing a lot of very acrobatic type of dancing there's so many great musical the, this, these songs from fiddle on the roof are some of the most well-known songs from i think okay you probably know rich girl the what's it called the gwen stefani yeah it was a rich girl, girl. Na, 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 na. Yeah. so it says from the if i was a rich man all day long i bitty bitty bum if i were a wealthy man i wouldn't have to that whole thing so that song is like Whoa. it's so well known and there's matchmaking there's bl lots of great songs but there's dancing and it's any this 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 the first act is full of humor and life and it's almost like a comedy and the act two gets a little bit more serious and there are genuine tears and i and I, like i was saying the young there was a very young audience at the beginning and we were worried because it seems like an old-fashioned show but it's it's about children parents and children which even kids are going to relate to and about them wanting to take the baton on it's our turn mm -hmm. now to move forwards even in this country and and the second day audience, which was last night, which is also was a much older crowd, and you could feel they knew this musical. They have seen it was there's a very famous movie done in 1971 with De Paul, where John Williams did his first scoring. John Williams of of Star Wars and, okay. and Jurassic Park and Jaws and uh, E.T. and so many things, and Superman. Uh, he his first score was adapting this. Uh, uh, Sheldon Harnick and Jerry Brock's musical score to for the movie, and he won his first Oscar for that in wow, 1971. Okay. So it's a very famous movie with T'Pol, and even that was my entry point into this. So people know T'Pol. Are you playing T'Pol? No, I'm playing Tevi. Yeah? But uh, and the, it's it's a it's a really it's it's uh, it's stuck the test of time because it's been translated. Like uh, uh, my favorite anecdote about this mo this show is that uh, in 1964 when it came out. Uh, the creative team, so um, Jerome Robbins, who is this famous choreographer, whose choreography is actually you, we are we are contractually obliged to repeat replicate some of the the there's like a famous bottle dance that happens you sh you, where you wait yeah. you actually like you, yeah with bottles on your heads and you it's at a wedding so it was like it's like a party trick that okay. happens okay and um, so it gets so we, he has done this so many times but uh, he he his choreography so iconic like West Side Story and this so 
the, the following year, there was a translation into Japanese. I'm going to Japanese no restaurant. Way. It was a, oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. So it was and um, well, when the the production team went over to watch sort of the debut there, or the or the, the, the opening night, and the, the, it was all in Japanese. They translated it, and they asked them. Um, the Japanese t- uh, production team asked the original production team, do they understand this musical in New York? And the, the Americans were quite taken back. Well, 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 of course, why do you say that? Because it's such a Japanese story. What? Because, and that is, it, it, it travels it, because of, of tradition, of the family commitment, of what your obligation is to your parents, to your community. Yeah. That, that's very strong. You know, having a son, like, you know, ev- you even adopt... A, a male child to take on your legacy because you, it might not be blood relation but they become family yeah. it's, it's so geared in that of your obligation and what you're supposed to be and do and they couldn't un- they, they was, it's such a Japanese story and even here I mean we it may be 2024 but we still have there's arranged marriages yeah. and there's you know this is how we do it this is how we this is how we've always done it yeah. but you know there's there's we're trying to move things forward and i think it is about so the, the fiddler on the roof title comes from a Marc Chagall painting he's one of these famous uh, artists and uh, who did a lot of depictions of these shtetls where these uh, these uh, uh, this community used to live okay. and there's a picture of this guy playing a violin and he's, he's sort of hovering in the air and his foot is sort of touching a roof and that's where they got the title and the idea is it's about being precariously balanced in life and you're trying to hold on to tradition and how you're trying to move forwards and how do you Ooh. call on to what's important but how do you grab on to what's the next thing that you need to keep your life grounded and stable and, and move forwards yeah. because you can't be stuck in the past this country can't be stuck in the past. No country can afford that. This is the thing. So we never can. It's, it's got so many levels. You can read into it. It can be just a fun, entertaining show with good songs and good dancing and good comedy and a and bit of tears at the end. Uh, but um, it can be something as big as you want it to be. It could be about... I know the, 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 there was a recent revival which emphasized the fact it's about displacement of minority peoples, which is something that happens in this country, about majorities mm. pers- persecuting minorities. It, all, of, all of that stuff is there, but ultimately it's about family, it's about life, it's about love, it's about tradition, holding on to it and breaking it and deciding when is the right time to do both. Man, I'm just so glad theater brings all of that it really into does. some kind of stage magic. And it it, it transports, it, 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 I mean, the best theater holds up a mirror to society. And if a mirror is 60 years old and it's still reflecting something you understand, then nothing has really changed. I don't. I think good art persists if it's grounded in truth. Mm. And this, there's, we've done me- mega musicals. We've done Phantom of the Opera. We've done Les Misérables. We've done Cats. We've done My Fair Lady, Eva. Lion King. You know, so many things. And all of those have these fantastic set pieces, like a chandelier that goes up, or the barricades, or in Evita the Casa Rosada, or you know the Serengeti, all the puppets for the Lion King. And this musical. Oh, they, when they asked me, is there sort of any iconography that we can sort of display in the foyer? And I was thinking, you know, there's really nothing. There's no, uh, there's no sort of edifice that's, you know, that, that's sort of synonymous with the show. Maybe the bottle dance is probably the most iconic visual aspect, and that is the people. And that's really what is, this musical is about, the people. And we wanted to, when we were thinking about because I became the president of the workshop players, like last year. Just w- Yeah, last year. I Jero, didn't know that. So our, our, our artistic uh, uh, founder and director and creative sort of guru, Jerome Kalakirti, Jerome Elder Silva, who is directing this play, and has directed like all everything that we've uh, most of nearly of ninety percent plus of what we have our output has been. Um, uh, he had choreographed a very uh, one of his first choreography gigs was nineteen seventy eight when we did when they did Fiddler. Whoa. So it was it's full circle and it was okay. the right one for him to come and and to take us back to you know really basics and do a traditional golden age one of the last golden age Broadway shows and it's such a uh, there's. You you can't you can't hide behind flashy lights and uh, you know um, uh, yeah something slick happening or some some sort of gimmicks or anything like that. It's just people on stage acting out a very human story, and that was a challenge. And we've got like I said, we, it's open. To, it was always our auditions are open to anyone who is willing to come in and muck in and really. But you have a fabulous time, and uh, we have like I think we would say eighty to ninety percent are first timers. 
new wow. blood, which is really important because I think after the pandemic, we lost two years mm. of this baton being passed to the next generation. Usually there's an old guard and the new people come in and they learn and they pass it on. And there's a continuity. And we, it got broken for a good two, three years. And we came back a little bit. We did mm. a collaboration with Stage Light and Magic last year with Julius Caesar. And that was also fun. And a few people have stayed on, but we've got mostly new people coming in. And they, have, they, are, they are spilling sweat and tears and occasionally a little bit of blood because I stubbed my toe. And people <laughs> have, people have, have, we have got dancers who have they fractured their second meta, meta ta, meta ca, tarsal bone doing a dance step. And they're still going tippy toes on. It's like black swan territory, man. It's like art over life. And they're dancing on broken so toes. So cool, man. So cool. No, so that's the passion that this thing brings to it. We don't want to miss a night. So I've, I've, I've yapped on about this show. I, I think really I have no questions because no, no, he's I, like said I will, everything. I will, yeah, I will sing the praises of this because it's, it runs, again, like I said, the next nine days. Please get your tickets. We're, uh, we, unfortunately, we haven't gone digital. The Lionel Vent means you need to go to the Lionel Vent Theater and grab your tickets there at the box office. But there are seats. There's definitely the weekday shows, uh, but they, if the word of mouth is good, and it has been, those are going to start going. So if you want a good seat and you want to prime and you want to have an unforgettable theatrical experience, because theater is not like watching a movie. Yeah. It is, it is immediate. More personal The connection also. is there. And the actors actually gear their performance to what they get back from the audience. So it is so, it is, when we, we practice this for four months and we think we know everything and we've lit it and we've got backdrops and projections and costumes and everything is there but it's still it's like only 50% done because the unknown piece of that puzzle in theater is the audience mm. and when the audience comes in then we have symbiosis and that's when we get give and take to the audience and that's when it becomes a living thing until then it's passive it, it, theater is a living breathing organism Absolutely. and we need an audience to for that energy to flow back and forth so we really would love you to come don't miss this show. It is beautiful. It is hilarious. It is tragic. It is uplifting, um, and you will leave. It's sad. It does have. A, it have. A, it, it does. It, but it is hopeful, and I think that's probably a good analogy of our yeah. country. It's joyous. We are ready to dance and have parties, and you know, celebrate the good times. But we will. We will stick through the bad times, and hopefully, the road will rise up to meet us, just like the people of Anatevka at the end. So. Hopefully, we will achieve the same thing in this country. We deserve to. I think we've gone through enough yeah. downers. Let's, let's way too much in our lifetimes, man. Way too much. <laughs> so, yeah. And thanks to people like Yaz. Yes. And you, you too. Well, we I try. Mean, we try. We and Jerome. And, and Jerome everybody. And everybody, you know. Just like whether you pick up a guitar and you know, you're, you're shredding, or whether you get up on a stage, or whether you're, whether you're headlining a rave, it's, it's like, you know, I work a nine to five as a doctor, right? And those are good and saving saving a life or having some mother said my you know, my kid is alive because of you and that has happened once, uh, is it's like so profound that I can't even put it into context. But from a personal level, uh, those moments of art is what separates us from just being a just yeah. an organism. Uh, you know, you don't need to do art to survive. You just need to eat, drink, maybe have some uh, financial resources to do that and live relatively comfortably. Art, some people, some people have sports, some, but art is something that is non-essential at a basic level, you think, but it is what makes us human. It's what separates us from any, I mean, there are definitely animals who do create, have creativity, but not at that level where we intellectualize it and put it out mm. there and it is left some of the legacy I mean we're, at a, I'm, it's, we're sadly at a point I'm my age where we're losing so many brilliant artists from yeah. I mean someone said and I agree with this things have gone down since Bowie passed away and I'm absolutely true you know since David Bowie went things have just gone to shh we can swear right? yeah, it's gone to swear. shit since Bowie went away I would argue since Freddie Mercury went away it's gone to shit but yeah definitely since Bowie I mean so many people were losing but their art lives on yeah. And, you know, as long as someone plays their music or reads their books or sings their songs or acts out their plays, they will never die. And that's what, that's what our enduring legacy will be. You know, there was a story, uh, Stephen Fry, who's one of my favorite, he's an author, you know, uh, uh, he does panel shows, he does movies, he does... And uh, it was, he's on a panel show called QI, which you should watch. It's so good, it's so clever. And there was, they sent out a, a, a capsule out into space with artifacts of humans. So there's binary code and there's different things that'll show 
uh, what we are as a species. Hmm. And someone said, well, should we put uh, J.S. Bach Suite or the 48 Preludes and Fugues? And someone said, well, I think that will be showing off, don't you think? Because, oh. <laughs> because yeah, Bach, yeah, 1685, 1715, 1685, and you're still playing Bach, man. So, yeah, we, art, art will live 400 years after we're gone. So let's make some good art, and I hope you come and partake in it. Do it, do it, do it, Sri Lanka. You know exactly where to go and get your tickets. Jai Viva to you and the team and Jerome and uh, everybody at the workshop players, yep. man, for keeping a good thing well, going. Well, you know, because Jerome has this, he has this belief that when, we, when we're trying to do promotion, that he wants print media because uh, a lot of our audiences have been sort of the legacy, yeah. the legacy media who will see it in the papers and all that. And he's quite skeptical when we get, ah, you've got 5,000 hits on TikTok. And he says TikTok means Nick Knock. It doesn't mean anything because, because this generation just wants a click like and that's fine. But unfortunately, you need to do a little bit further. So if you're a TikTok or if you're a young person, liking it is great. We would All the support is great. But, you know, go and get a ticket. If you've got a friend in the show or if you know anyone, just head on down there, grab a ticket. They're, they're, they're definitely affordable, okay? And come and experience it because there's nothing. This little screen just gives you such a, you know I've seen people at concerts like this there's a live band in front of you put that bloody phone away okay this is good for when you're at home and there's no one around but there is life living mm. breathing people in front of you engage with people so get your tickets if if you're this this is I actually came here because I know you've got a such a nice your your sort of your your um, your first responders out there who listen to you are sort of that younger generation I want I, I think it's not some old-fashioned show it's a show about young people it could be set up like you know 60 years back or 1905 so maybe a hundred and but like you said if it's like a mirror it is it really is and uh, yeah so come and see it it's uh, you, you'll uh, you'll get a new appreciation and and hopefully you'll be inspired to come and join us when we put something on next year you know so it's yeah why not man yeah there's so many people saying damn we wish we came so don't so come and see what it's all about and come and enjoy it and then come and audition next year we we we, we, we will keep going on but we need the support of everyone so please support support always support local arts local, yeah uh, local theater local music and this great person here thank uh, you all teamwork. No, it's a full circle always. It is. No, no. Teamwork. Whenever, Teamwork. whenever I, whenever I shout your praises, you say, "No, it's all yeah." But, but yeah, we need, Teamwork. we need. You, you are fulfilling the role that very few people fulfill. So I'm, I always, I will always have so much deference to you. So thank you so arigato much. Arigato gozaimasu. Stay tuned oh, too. Oh, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, <laughs> Doma no. arigato. Uh, Doma arigato. I don't know what that no, means. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. <laughs> jaya, jaya. jaya, jaya. See you guys jaya. there at the wind. Lakayem to la.